Hello and welcome to a look at the Trainor Ratio with me Andy Duncan at Finlingo.com. The Trainor Ratio is extremely similar to the Sharp Ratio. However, instead of using total risk as a denominator, it uses beta risk instead. This is the systematic risk of a target portfolio. Go see the videos. Systematic risk is also known as market risk. If the market portfolio is the most diversified in any economic segment or even the entire global economy, it's impossible to diversify any further within that segment. All the systematic risk has been eliminated. So for a well-diversified portfolio, the Trainor Ratio is a great relative risk measure to compare it to other well-diversified portfolios, and that includes the general market. If one portfolio gives a high relative Trainor compared to another portfolio, it might be a very good investment, but we need to be careful. Both investments under comparison do need to be well-diversified, otherwise we could walk straight into a risk-related trap. Sometimes the Sharp Ratio might be the better measure because it uses total risk, and that includes non-systematic undiversifiable risk. Here we've got a target portfolio on the y-axis. You can see most of its points are above the market line, with one slightly lower at the left-hand edge. There's also that quite bad year in the middle. The current annual returns are 20% for the market and 25% for the target, so the target looks good as a potential investment. But because of that total volatility from that one bad year, the Sharpe Ratio thinks the market might be better. The Trainor Ratio is saying the target's better, so which ratio is the right one to use in this case? Well, we do know that this target portfolio is well diversified. It's got an R-squared measure above the magic 70%. Go see that video. In this case, it is good to use the Trainor Ratio, or at least to consider doing more research on the target portfolio. Let's just change those target numbers around. This time we've got a superb Trainor Ratio for the target. It's almost 400% higher than the market's Trainor Ratio. For the market, the Sharp Ratio is only about 20% higher. But that high target Trainor is being caused by a super low beta rating of just 0.34. So which ratio is the best one now? Should we go for Sharp or should we go for Trainor? Well, just by looking at the target, we can see it's bouncing about all over the place. It's got an epic total risk. So let's just take a look at the R squared value. This time, it's a measly 5%. This target is very poorly diversified. So that low beta was a red herring. It's made the train or high, but that's because it's an unreliable beta. Here, we should use the Sharpe ratio, and that'll avoid any unnecessary tears. In this case, the market has won. Let's do one more. Here we've got a lowish beta again, so this might make us very suspicious. But the high R squared of 88% does mean it's well diversified. It's also winning in both the Sharp Ratio and the Trainer Ratio War. The numbers are good. So let's at least consider this target for more research. Just for fun, let's try a Trainer calculation on Finlingo. We've got a portfolio return of 20.89% a risk-free return of 1.7% and a beta risk figure of a quite high 1.77. This we know is going to drive the Trainor Ratio down. So let's get those figures over to another cunning spreadsheet. We take 1.7 away from 20.89%. This gives us an excess return figure of 19.19%. We then divide this excess by a beta of 1.77 to get to a Trainor Ratio of 10.84. We check it out on Finlingo and the calculation is complete. Head on over now to finlingo.com to get an infinite number of questions on how to calculate both the Sharp Ratio and the Trainor Ratio until you always know the difference. You'll find these and hundreds of other CFA style questions available on the website, and you can use it too on a tablet or even on your phone. Finlingo. Speak finance fluently.